It's a great honour to be invited here today to Southwark Cathedral to join in solidarity with the Armenian community of the United Kingdom in solemn remembrance of the horror of their genocide. The nationalistic government of Enver and Talal Pasha of the so-called Young Turks or Committee of Union and Progress found the political will to execute a true genocide. On the 24th of April, Armenian intellectuals were arrested and summarily executed in public hangings in groups of 50 to 100 men. The wider community, deprived of their leaders and lacking any proper military means to defend themselves, were then eliminated by a systematic series of massacres. Today, it seems easier to talk about genocide in the last two decades than in the past 100 years ago. And yet for many governments, the Armenian genocide remains a bone that sticks in their throat that is difficult for them to address. And Turkey continues to deny not only the legal label that we give to the crimes of 1915, but also the facts. By attempting to distort them and to suggest that the massacres of the Armenians, the genocide of the Armenians, were in fact wartime deaths like so many others. with us all the time, the, the story of the genocide, the, the story that our grandparents told us. Uh, we can't forget it because it's very personal. Today, 100 years later, the situation for Christians in the Middle East is no less drastic. Once again, ancient communities of Christians are under threat and face great dangers. Armenia became the first Christian state in the world in 301 Antidem, years before the Emperor Constantine accepted Christianity. With God's help, we will never forget, nor will we be silent. And may we pray that justice, freedom and truth will prevail. Unfortunately, not many people know about the Armenian Genocide. The subject becoming more of a, um, or gaining more political leverage. Uh, the information has become more publicly available. The internet has become more freely available and uh, that's a very good means of uh, conveying the information. So it remains for us to promote it further and for the Pope or anyone else who is of a uh, stature to openly talk about it and address it and hopefully gradually to convince Turkey and the, especially the Turkish government, not the people, that their stance is totally incorrect. In the weeks to come, we're going to hear a great deal, not only about the genocide of the Armenians, but also, and particularly from Turkey, about the Battle of Gallipoli, the deaths of combatants who fight voluntarily out of patriotic duty cannot be compared in any manner with the murder, the intentional destruction of a people because they stand in the way, are perceived to stand in the way of an extremist nationalist project. This must never be forgotten. We see the fresh air coming of to, to the surface of the water now. If we don't recognize the lessons of the Armenian genocide, that genocide in this or that form will repeat it here and there. It repeated with the Holocaust in Cambodia, in Africa. The message of 24th of April is not only a message of huge tragedy, loss and a genocide, but it is a message of victory. Because the whole idea of genocide was to exterminate a nation, the whole nation of Armenians. They didn't succeed. Here we are, the nation worldwide, between eight and 10 million, successful everywhere in science, business, politics, a country, not even one, but two, 
Republic of Armenia and Republic of Artsakh. In this august setting of Southwark Cathedral, I reiterate my call that I made earlier on this week in the European Parliament this week to call for, during the joint cross-party debate and resolution that we passed, for Turkey to face up to its terrible crimes of 1915 against the Armenians, as many other countries like Germany have done in the past, or more recently, Serbia or Croatia, regarding their own terrible crimes against humanity. Only then can we really move forward and put the past behind us and enable closure for all parties on this dark episode of Turkish history. There has to be element of asking for forgiveness, compensation, and let's not forget Turkey's attitude towards uh, Armenia, the state next to it, is nothing short of being a neighbor from hell. At the end of the day, we are neighbors. At the end of the day, we need to come to sort of a, some sort of a reconciliation understanding uh, so that we can live side by side happily and develop. Amen. Are.